Okay, I'm almost center of the home right here, facing towards the rear. Kitchen's gonna be over on this side where my light is. Here's an old uh, fireplace. I don't remember seeing that upstairs, but I really wasn't paying attention. It might still be framed up through that walls, but there's the base for that over here. For reference, there is the root cellar or storm shelter over on that side. What I wanna show right here is the part of the reason for the looseness in the floors is just the way everything's laid out here. Old home, there is no subfloor here. Here is your original uh, subfloor plus your original floor, which is hardwood floors running front to rear on the home. Down below that is your floor joist running left to right. You can see the spacing on that. I'd trace a little line right through the middle. We're a good 24 inches on center. That's a bit far. Um, ordinarily, nowadays, you're going to see that at 16 inches on center. Uh, it also, below those floor joists, does have enough lines of sill. There are a total of six lines of sill here. There's the far left exterior wall. Here's a shaker sill right here. Here's the interior wall. There's the next interior hallway or dog trot wall over there. So there's plenty of lines of sill. Some of them are loose. Here is, let's see, this one is sturdy, shimmed up with steel shims on both sides. We'll swap that out, get that shim the right way. But we reshim this home all we can. We get the proper number of base block combos in here. I think your floors are still gonna be loose because of your spacing on this floor joist and the fact that you have no subfloor. So where we have some excessive bounce, what we can do is install a new floor joist in the middle, but we kind of don't know what that's gonna, if that's gonna be needed until we start doing the work.